The Lord set his people in hope while the sea engulfed their foes. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning, welcome to this Mass. We remember today, Evilio Ascona. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal mystery and the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter and John were talking to the people, the priests came up to him, accompanied by the captain of the temple of the Sadducees. They were extremely annoyed at their teaching the people the doctrine of the resurrection from the dead by proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus. They arrested them, but as it was already late, they held them until the next day. But many of those who had listened to their message became believers, the total numbers of whom had now risen to something like 5,000. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes had a meeting in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, Jonathan, Alexander, and all the members of the high priestly families. They made the prisoners stand in the middle and began to interrogate them. By what power and by whose name have you men done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, addressed them. Rulers of the people and elders, if you are questioning us today about an act of kindness to a cripple and asking us how he was healed, then I am glad to tell you all and would indeed be glad to tell the whole people of Israel that it was by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the one you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by this name and by no other, than this man is able to stand up perfectly healthy here in your presence today. This is the stone rejected by you, the builders, but which has proved to be the keystone. For all of the names in the world given to men this is the only one by which we can be saved. 
This is the word of the Lord. In response to the psalm, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the law say, his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant us salvation. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is the name of the Lord, is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Shall we rise to meet the gospel? Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus showed himself again to the disciples. It was by the Sea of Tiberias, and it happened like this. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two more of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. They replied, we'll come with you. They went out and got into the boat, but caught nothing that night. It was light by now, and there stood Jesus on the shore, though the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus called out, have you caught anything, friends? And when they answered no, he said, throw the net out to the starboard and you'll find something. So they dropped the net, and there were so many fish that they could not haul it in. The disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. At these words, It is the Lord, Simon Peter, who had practically nothing on, wrapped his cloak round him and jumped into the water. The other disciples came on in the boat, towing the net and the fish. They were only about a hundred yards from land. As soon as they came ashore, they saw that there was some bread there and a charcoal fire with fish cooking on it. Jesus said, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore full of big fish, 153 of them. And in spite of there being so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come, and have breakfast. None of the disciples was bold enough to ask, Who are you? They knew quite well it was the Lord. Jesus then stepped forward, took the bread, and gave it to them, and the same with the fish. This was the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples after rising from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. We have another resurrection appearance of Jesus to seven of the disciples in today's gospel. Peter confessed Jesus as the Holy One of God, but is famous for denying Jesus. He has been deeply flawed, but becomes a different man after the resurrection. 
He is the leader of the disciples. Thomas is famous for doubting the resurrection. But when Jesus appears to him, Thomas confesses, my Lord and my God. Nathaniel is mentioned only in this gospel and is best known for doubting that anything good could come out of Nazareth. But after meeting Jesus, Nathaniel confesses, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. The sons of Zebedee, James and John, are the two others who are not mentioned by name. It has been suggested by some scholars that when Peter says that he is going fishing, that he's turning back on being a fisher of men. But that reads too much into the text. People have to eat and fishermen get their food from the sea. And also, when people do not know what to do, they do what they know. They turn to the comfort of a familiar activity. Peter is a fisherman accustomed to the busy, physically demanding life of the sea. So we should expect him to grow restless when not working and to welcome the busyness of boats and nets. He and the other disciples take up their nets, row their boats, and look for fish. And yet, there is a danger here. Immersed in what is familiar, people sometimes fail to do other essential tasks. Will that happen to these disciples? Will they return to their ministry? Jesus intervenes to ensure that they will not be lost permanently to their old ways. I wrote my homily uh, yesterday, and then I read it again this morning, and I thought, Father John, don't lecture the congregation this morning. So I'm going to miss out two paragraphs. Anyone who wants to know what they were about, I'll tell you later. What does Jesus do with the disciples? He explains and says to them, throw your nets out to the right and you will find something. These men obey Jesus even though they have not recognized him. And it's not unusual for bystanders to suggest a different fishing spot to an unsuccessful fisherman. Sometimes local people know local secrets. So we should not be too surprised that these men follow Jesus' suggestion. The result of their obedience is a catch so great they cannot haul it in. Then John the disciple Jesus loves says to Peter, it is the Lord. Just as on Easter morning, the beloved disciple is the first to see and believe, and Peter is the first to act. John has the gift of spiritual discernment. Peter, being Peter, just dives right in. The other disciples brought the huge catch into shore, and Jesus cooks breakfast for them. There are Eucharistic overtones here taking and giving bread, and then the same with the fish. Jesus is sensitive both to people's physical and spiritual needs. The church follows Jesus' example by feeding, clothing, housing, educating, and so many other ways. Our concern for people's physical needs not only relieves human suffering, but also constitutes a powerful spiritual witness. There are many questions we can ponder on today, perhaps one or two to consider. In what ways has Jesus revealed himself to each of us today? What can I do today to relieve the needs of others? How can I witness today to what God has done in my life? 
Perhaps we might pick one of these to focus on and let that word come alive in our hearts. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that they may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the resurrected Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Have a very blessed day.